Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this series I'm putting together, we are revisiting the ISS to Station 5 challenge. The challenge in this mission is that the Station 5 is uh, 63 something degrees out of plane, 61.3, something like that, out of plane with the ISS. And if you take a brute force approach to just undocking from the ISS and trying to do an immediate plane change and then a rendezvous, uh, you're probably going to find out that you come up just a bit short of fuel and the only way you'll be able to continue your mission would be with some kind of fuel cheat. Um, it's not too difficult of a challenge because there are several things that you can do to make the trip over to the Station 5. The first time we visited this scenario, we raised our orbit way out into space, did a plane change, came back down and rendezvoused with uh, quite a bit of Delta V to spare. But I wanted to see if we could improve over that. So this time we lowered our orbit down into the atmosphere, used the dynamic pressure of Earth's upper atmosphere to steer ourselves in the plane with the Station 5. And when we did that, we brought our, uh, after six passes, we brought our relative inclination all the way down to 0 0.53 degrees. So that's the, that's the scenario. Let's go ahead and switch camera views here, jump back into the XR2 Raven Star and finish things up. In the previous video, we uh, completed our our rendezvous burn, so we are on our way to the Station 5 now, and we should be arriving in, um, we should be arriving within just 24 meters of the Station 5, and that'll be happening here in, the, in a little while. So let's, uh, let's continue on. Let me think about what I want to have open. So let me open up Orbit MFD. No, I don't really need that. Let me let me open up Doc MFD, and let me target the Station Five. Uh, let's let's target Station Five in general first, because that'll give us the long range. And then, and then we'll, when we get in a bit closer, we'll target uh, Docking Port One or Four. I'm still not brave enough to tackle uh, two, three five or six because those are on the outside of the station five and and that's going to burn a lot of delta v and i'm really curious to see how efficient i can be with my delta v usage all right let me just think here what else do we want so let's just get closer first of all yeah let's get closer so i guess one thing how close do we want to get that's something we should take into consideration we know that our encounter velocity is going to be somewhere around 420. Let's check what IMFD says. Um, let me see here. Let me get out of the burn vector. Yeah, my intercept velocity is right around 420. So let's look at burn time calculator and see how much, uh, how much distance we need to get rid of that much velocity. So let's just punch it in as 420. So we need about 3.8 kilometers, but you know, we probably want to leave a kilometer or so out. So I'm going to say we want to start our braking. Uh, we want to start our velocity match when we're around five kilometers out. So speaking of velocity match, let's bring up interplanetary MFD. Let's go to menu and orbital and choose the velocity match program. <clears throat> and we're going to target station five. And we'll, we'll, we'll use this when we're in close. So let's see, our distance is 1.2m. So we got a ways to go. Let's go ahead and warp time forward. And so let me think. It's around 200k. I'm going to come out of time warp and think for a second. Okay, now we're getting, we can see in Transex, we're getting really close. So we're going to rendezvous over at that point somewhere. So I just want to make sure that I don't miss and mess this up at the last second. In fact, while I'm thinking about it, I don't trust myself. Let me save. <laughs> I haven't done very many saves because I've, I've just been recording this back to back to back. All right, so our distance, and we only need about five kilometers, so we can get in pretty close. And this will probably be using the main engines, I would think. So we won't actually see. Oh, never mind. There it is. You can see it coming at us right now. Neat. Let's go ahead and help out the autopilot. Translation. Rotation. 
and I'm thinking since we don't have that crosshair, I'm thinking we're going to have to do a complete flip over to get that lined up. And it's approaching us pretty fast, so let's uh, let's do that. And again, we want about five kilometers. I'm going to double check that in burn time. A little bit more on the time warp. Okay, so we're almost in the position that we need to be in. So let's kill rotate. Let's uh, all right. Let's go ahead and warp time four. Get in a little bit closer. So, uh, yeah, it's, it was about five kilometers. So. Okay, things are starting to happen really fast. Now I'm panicking. Okay, we're almost in position. I'm just helping out the autopilot so it has less work to do. All right, that's coming up really fast. So, and burn. I think I started that maybe a little sooner than I planned, but yeah, I was starting to feel nervous. You know, we're at the end of the mission. You don't want to blow it in the last second. Okay, so that's our velocity match. So we should be pretty well zeroed out. Let's uh, ro rotate around. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up a uh, dock on this side. Let's target port one first. Throw that out onto the HUD. So we're about 1.4 kilometers out. We are moving towards the station at about a half meter per second. And there we are. Yeah, we made it. Nice. All right, let me kill rotate. So since we're since we're approaching the, the station five from this side, I feel like it makes sense to use this docking port. We could go all the way around if we wanted to for some reason, but why do that? All right, now let's uh, take a look. Let's let me look at a burn time calculator again or not burn time calculator, but IMFD. I wanted to see how much DV we just used. It was about 420, I know that. It was really close to it. So let me switch camera views over here. So raising our PA from our current altitude to 2K <clears throat> actually cost us right around 420. All right. And with that in mind, how much delta V do we have remaining now that we're here? 5.7 K, so 5,714. So let's just take a quick look at how that compares. So that's on paper, at least that's a little bit better than plan four, not massively better, but better. And I can imagine that realistically, this number would be lower than 5,500. Just that's my gut tells me that actually performing the uh, atmospheric braking maneuver and getting all of that dialed in would we would end up being lower. Maybe we'll fly that plan at some point and find out. But we're clearly beating these other plans. All right, so that's where we're at. Let's jump back in and and go home, or uh, you know, dial this into the to the. Uh, station so we could um you know just throw in pursuit mfd and hit go but it'll be more efficient if we get ourselves in the ballpark if we get ourselves closer to where we want to be before we just turn on pursuit mfd so let's go ahead and do that let's start moving towards the place we want to go at a couple meters a second and we'll time warp okay let me go ahead and power down that mfd and you know maybe we'll even do this manually for fun okay a bit of time warp all right we're pretty close Let's uh, switch to rotation and let's get the vessel a little bit more lined up. Again, even if we do decide to use Pursuit MFD, you know, just helping out the autopilot is going to probably be more efficient than just letting the autopilot do everything. All right, 
and let's just get rotated in a position that I feel is probably closer to what we want. Translation, rotation. Okay, so now we have our X, so that'll help us get oriented a bit better. Okay, so that's the X lined up. Let me actually start slowing down a little bit here. Translation. Because I don't want to run into the station before I'm ready to dock. Rotation. Okay, so now we have our X lined up. Now we just want to focus a little bit on the crosshair. And we know we need to be, you know, down and over from our current position. So we'll do that. And I'm just going to back off the approach just a little bit more. Because I don't want to run into the station before I'm ready to, before I'm ready to dock. It's a bit of time work just to speed all this up. And the cross here is almost lined up on that axis, so let's come out of time warp and get going this way. A little more on the time warp. And we're almost lined up in that direction, so take out that. And yeah, we're almost uh, we're almost dialed in perfectly. Okay, so let's move in. Toward, well, actually, we need to put in forward translation. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and since we've, you know, we've done a pretty good job here of getting lined up and, you know, helping out the autopilot, um, just for the sake of time and for the sake of not having to mess around, we'll go ahead and use Pursuit MFD since we do know about it and we know how to use it. So we'll select Dock, we'll target the, uh, the Station 5, target Station 5, and we want Docking Port 1. So local docking port is one, target docking port is one. And our real X is uh, really close. So let's go ahead and put in our distances. We want zero, zero, and let's go 100. And for now we'll go just like this. And we'll have it get, we'll have it get locked in on zero, zero. And then as we're getting closer to 100, we'll, um, you know, we'll move in the rest of the way. Okay, so uh, just to be a bit more efficient, let's go ahead and put in our last number. And somebody told me if you just do Z, like, because I don't want to change my X or Y, so I can just do Z, Z although I'm not sure if I do negative Z. You know what, I'm going to do it the way I know how to do it. Zero, zero, and then we're going to go negative one. No, we're going to go negative 0 0.5. Enter. And that's going to take us the rest of the way in. And we don't really need this up anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up burn time calculator so that just before we touch... Warning. Nose cone is closed. Hey, thank you. Warning. Nose cone is closed. Turn on the APU. Warning. I just wish it didn't warn me every second. Closed. Like, come on. Warning. Nose cone is closed. At least that one doesn't warn you while it's opening, whereas the landing gear warns you while you're putting it down. That makes no sense. 75. So it looks like we're going to finish this mission with exactly 5,700 meters per second. That's definitely <clears throat> better than we did, obviously, in the other flight. The only question is, would we, is there, I mean, obviously, if we did this flight better, we could beat it, but is there another method that would beat this one? So we're just moving in. 40. Actually, we might end up a little bit less than 5.7 because you can hear those RCS thrusters kicking quite often.
but when we're maybe like one meter to touching, then I'll note our our remaining delta V, and that will be our final number. Because once we're actually docked, we have a useless number. It's about 20, a little over 20 meters to go. Information. APU running. Go ahead and turn off the APU. 20. No point in having that burning. About 15 meters to go, so we're almost there. It's been a pretty 15. long journey in terms of real lifetime. Started recording these like hours and hours ago. Lost track. 10. All right. Nine. So it looks like we will finish eight, up with 5,700. Seven, Don't know what those last decimal points six, are, but we'll go with 5,700. Five, oh, 5,699. Okay. Two, one. Just seeing if it flips before we hit, actually hit contact. Contact. Nope, didn't flip. Five six nine nine. All right. Let's turn on external cooling. External O2. All right, we got the radiator out. That's fine. External cooling online. Guess we can turn off lights. And yeah, I think we'll go with that because we're not going to run out of oxygen at this point, and we're not burning through any other resources. Let me do a control S to save at this point. Let me power off the MFD first, at least that one. Control S to save at this point. Let's look outside. See all of our hard work paid off. And that's a nice view right there to end on, I think. All right, so let me do one last thing before we close out. We're going to go to plan. Let me just put in, just like I did here, so DV remainder just before docking, we saw it was five, six, nine, nine. So that's the plan to beat. All right. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed this long journey between the ISS and the Station Five. Hope you learned some things about, you know, using that surfing maneuver through the atmosphere that maybe you can, uh, maybe you can utilize in some of your flights. Let me know what you think. I really, I really genuinely want to know what do you think of this flight. Did you? Uh, you know, do you think it's uh, too too tedious? Would you ever try something like this? Or would the fact that, you know, you have to go around so many times, w would it just be too much of your real lifetime? Would you prefer some of the other, <clears throat> some of the other flights that just don't take so much of your real world time? I'm very curious to know about that. And if you want to see one of the other flights that we talked about, which one of the other ones is most interesting to you? I think for me, the most interesting is going to be the uh, using the Earth's atmosphere as a break, or doing a moon sling and seeing how those how those play out. But that is going to wrap it up for this series. Uh, please leave a like, comments, and I will see you in the next video, if there is one.